Welcome to this Killick Explains video, another topical one, I think, what a falling pound means for investors. Now, in case you're in any doubt, the pound is definitely falling, or has been for some time. It's close to a 40-year low against, well, the US dollar is the one commonly quoted, the euro, and frankly, most other currencies. So it is down at a level that we haven't seen for decades. Now, the question is, why? And then we'll talk about what it means. So the reasons why are complex, but can be basically summarized as there's an underlying structural weakness. Um, as an economy, we have a big deficit. We've been carrying that for, for many years now, actually going right back pre-Brexit and so on. Uh, and that has been making the currency markets pretty nervous. Um, we've also got behind the curve on inflation, according to the currency markets again. So whereas at the time I'm making this video, uh, September 2022, the US Fed has signaled some quite aggressive uh, interest rate rises to combat inflation, uh, the Bank of England is going in hard, but slightly less hard. Uh, and that drag will tend to pull up the dollar versus the pound. So there's the second factor weighing in particular on the exchange rate between sterling and the US dollar. Um, basically, ever since Brexit, there's been a degree of uncertainty, whatever your view of it, um, around trade. So what new trade arrangements will the brand new Conservative government be able to strike? Uh, that's been an ongoing cause of some concern, if you like. And government spending is rising. The latest mini-budget, as I think we're not supposed to call it, has suggested that there's going to be tax cuts and various other things, things that will basically reduce, potentially, the amount of money in government coffers and effectively mean they've got to go out borrowing more. So the impact on the, on the gilts market was fairly clear. So lots of reasons for currency markets to be nervous. And remember that the currency is essentially the bellwether for the state of the economy. Currency traders mark the pound down when they're nervous about the UK's prospects economically looking ahead against other major currencies. So what's the impact of a weak pound? I mean, does it matter? Well, it all depends who you ask to some degree. I mean, the UK has suddenly become a massive destination for tourists, apparently the biggest European destination, because you know, if you're an American, for example, a weak pound means it's really cheap to come over here. But leaving that to one side, what it means for business is UK exports get cheaper, including tourism, so that could be a good thing, potentially. But imports get more expensive, um, and that's definitely not a good thing, and a lot of businesses do rely on dragging in raw materials and so on, I uh, think commodities and so on from overseas. All right, and that basically can be quite inflationary. If you imagine that raw material costs in particular are rising, that adds to business costs, adds to their product costs, cost pressures, and it's indicative, as I mentioned, of a loss of confidence. The fact that traders are marking down the pound suggests they're marking down the UK, or UK PLC, if you like. Um, and you could even get to a point, probably unlikely, where you get a run on the pound. Now, that, frankly, is more of a media headline, but a run on the pound is the situation where markets essentially lose confidence altogether. I don't think we're there yet, but uh, that would be the extreme logical ending of what I'm describing. Now, should investors worry, leaving aside a possible run on the pound, let's say, should investors worry? Number one, a weak pound, as I mentioned, is not a great signal for UK PLC. Currency markets are brutal, they're liquid, they're forward-looking, so a pound at a 40-year low means the prospects for the UK don't look brilliant from a currency point of view. Um, it does add to firms' costs, as I mentioned, but on the flip side, it does boost the sterling value of both overseas income and overseas assets. So from an investment point of view, it all depends. What do I mean by that? Well, if you imagine, let's say 100 pounds becomes $100 at a pound dollar exchange rate of one to one, okay? And we're getting close to parity, as they call it, at the moment, the way things are going. But imagine for a moment uh, what would happen if that rate were to move from one to one to two to one. 
that would be a weak pound and a strong dollar. Well, suddenly $100 would become 200 pounds at that new rate, strong dollar, weak pound. So if you're an investor receiving overseas income, or you're looking at gains, cashing in gains on overseas assets, essentially a weak pound can increase their value in sterling. So that's worth bearing in mind. It's a sort of nuanced picture, if you like. So as an investor, what does that all add up to? What kind of investor won't worry too much about a weak pound? And the answer is somebody who's internationally diversified. That definitely helps with those dollar-denominated investments, for example. Someone who's focused on long-term growth won't worry overly much about short-term anything. That's the point, whether the short-term thing that everyone else is worrying about is a weak pound. Um, you need to be structured correctly. So those people who've got their three pots organised, for example, for those people thinking that a weak pound is inflationary, those people who've got their cash reserve in place, their foreseeable calls on capital identified and funded, and then their lifetime savings working away in the equity market will feel more comfortable. And finally, anyone who's relatively experienced and anyone who's not who's a good listener. Because if you talk to investors who've seen it all before, this isn't the first time we've suffered a weak pound. It doesn't make everyone feel especially comfortable in the short term, but it's unlikely to be a phenomena that lasts indefinitely. Okay, when the pound will start to strengthen, when faith is restored in corporate uh, UK, uh, properly, let's say, by currency markets, I can't tell you. But nonetheless, experienced, long-term investors won't panic unduly about the battering that sterling is currently taking. Now, if you'd like to watch videos on some of the jargon I've been mentioning all the way along, there are other foreign exchange videos in my collection, killick.com forward slash learn. And if you'd like to read all about some of this stuff, you might like to ping me for a copy of Confidant, our quarterly magazine. There are occasionally articles in there. And that would be editor at killick.com. And if you want to find out more about some of the investing principles I mentioned at the end there fairly quickly, including the three pots approach, then any of the guides next to me, there are actually six in total, just two here, would answer that one for you. Again, editor at killick.com.